Mike, it's almost Halloween. I mean, I can tell that from everywhere I look. Being scared is right. kind of the hallmark, so to speak, of, right. of this holiday. Um, why is it that we would want to be scared? Well, it's stimulating. I mean, when you're scared of something <laughs> happens, a little scary. You know, as long as the snake is far enough away, you know, it's stimulating. It's a, it constitutes a memorable experience. It's when they're a little closer, then, then uh, you can go sort of off the, off the rails. So what's going on chemically in the brain when you experience fright? Well, it's, it's uh, of course, you, it's all about protecting yourself because it's all about survival. So the brain basically is setting you up for surviving, and it's doing that in the body. You got to, it's going to pump more blood. It's going to raise your heart rate. It's going to pump blood at a higher pressure out to the muscles, and not any longer to places that things that don't matter, like your kidneys or your guts. It's all going to go to the muscles. You're ready to flee or ready to fight, and then in your brain itself, it's basically turning up the amp. It's amplifying your your alertness. You're ready at us for action. You know, you're going to respond. It's turning down the thinking brain in a sense because you're going to be reactive. So it's basically having a big impact. It's all be, be happened because your amygdala, the amygdala is the center in your brain. Amygdala means almonds, an almond shaped structure. And it's start, starting to go a little crazy. And it's saying, okay, we got to be ready. We're either going to have to run or we're going to fight to protect ourselves. And overall, this is a stimulating experience, overall, in a sense. It's uh, carrying you out into another world away from the ordinary. So, Mike, you mentioned fight or flight, but in, when you're watching a horror movie, you're doing neither. What's that about? Well, uh, Jeff, context matters. So I'm, I'm in the, uh, I don't know, haunted house at Halloween, right? And I know things there are inherently scary. I mean, I see things that are... are, are I should be frightened of if they were real, but I, but over overall, uh, overriding this, my my I have a thinking brain, and the context of the situation is controlling how I react, just enough, so that I get the thrill of the fear, without actually running out of the haunted house and uh, and trying to save my life. Speaking personally, I know that some of my strongest memories are actually about things that were pretty scary at the time. Right. What's that about? Well, you see something that's threatening to you, that, uh, and it's really important that your brain record it, because it's all about survival. And the brain is very good at recording things that are scary or threatening to you. And uh, basically, when that happens, the brain turns on the chemicals that are modulating change in your brain. It's saying, record this forever. Never forget this one. And you're basically building a library of things that you should be responding to fearfully, right? So you can grow your fears to things that are appropriate to fear, right? And so that's what that's about. Sometimes people have experiences that are so scary and traumatic right. that they black them out, they suppress them, they have no memory of them. Right. Why well, is that? Well, people commonly suppress things that, uh, especially things that are persistently fearful to them, that they just can't escape. They try to, try to, try to bring them out of mind. They're doing that because they pay such a price for them rising up in their mind and, 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 and remembering them. So this is commonly the common occurrence in something like a post-traumatic stress condition where, 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 where you're doing everything possible to keep from bringing this to, into present mind because of the consequences of that. So uh, we have powerful processes, powerful mechanisms basically to make life livable you could say even though there might be terribly traumatic things that have occurred in your past life. Well, getting back to Halloween, um, I wanted to ask you about the trick or treat dilemma. Right. Um, why is it that those are the choices? Well, what wonderful choices. You know, it's called a win-win situation. I mean, trick or treat. I mean, what could be better than that? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's just fabulous that for the kid, it's all good. And uh, it's uh, uh, one wonderful thing about another shows up in your bag, and or, or every so often, some little sparky thing gets to be done, in re in revenge. You know, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great, it's a great concept. Well, Mike, what are your plans for this Halloween? Well, I have grandchildren, so grandchildren sort of solve the problem because you can follow them around. And first of all, they're so darn cute. And, and uh, But uh, they're surrounded by other kids that are just so darn cute, and uh, everyone's having such great fun. Mike, one last question. Right. And, and as uh, a leading neuroscientist, I, right. I, I have to ask you this. Right. 
Uh, do we need to worry about the zombie apocalypse? Holy cow, yeah. No. <laughs> 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 uh, only at Halloween. <laughs>